everyone, how's it going? Forrest here, again with another installment of my complete analysis of all of JS Bach's chorale harmonizations. Today we're looking at Wachet auf, ruft uns die Stimme, which translates to Awake, the voice is calling us. It looks like we have a very long chorale today, but remember it's in cut time, so our harmonic rhythm is on beat 1 and beat 3, so it's actually deceptively lengthy in terms of its appearance, but it's actually quite short, so we're going to breeze right through this chorale. I think the only thing that adds to the length of this chorale is the frequency of the cadences. We have a series of, like, you know, three-beat cadences that we have to talk about, but other than the first section, it's a relative uh, breeze just to, to get through. But just to hop into the analysis, three flats in the key signature. We start on E flat major. We end on E flat major. I reckon we're in the key of E flat major and our first cadence is what I'm calling a half cadence in the key of E flat major. But I think you could also analyze it as an imperfect authentic cadence. It really just depends on how you hear it. To me, I hear it as a half cadence, uh, but I think the analysis looks better as an imperfect authentic cadence, but I'm not going to let that sway me. So we start off with our E flat major chord. We then have B flat, E flat, and G, just a revoicing of the same chord. We then have E flat, E flat, G, and B again, so no need to reanalyze. This G is a chord tone, so I don't need to mark it, but it is kind of like the chord is getting inverted on beat two. Then beat, or beat one and, and then beat two is B flat, B flat, F, and, or sorry, B flat, D, F, and B flat. Apologies for the short font. I try to keep the entirety of the chorale on one page if I can do so without it being too crammed. And this is just about the limit that I go to. So the font is relatively small, but I save paper. Um, but yeah, so this is a B flat major triad in root position, which is our dominant, passing seventh in the bass. And this B flat is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. G, E flat, G, and B flat. That's another tonic triad, E flat major and first inversion, passing tone in the bass. And then we have E flat, B flat, F, and B flat. I reckon this E flat is a non chord tone, and this D is what we're looking at, which would make this a B flat major triad and first inversion. That's 5, 6. And then we have E flat, B flat, G, and C. And this is where it gets interesting because in the key of E flat major, that would be a 6, 6, 5 chord, which is relatively uncommon in the context of um, like a cadential situation. We wouldn't see that as a likely cadential chord. The only context in which we do see these 6, 6, 5s are in these ambiguous half cadence or imperfect authentic cadence situations. Regardless, this uh, C is a chord tone, but it's kind of like putting the chord in root position, but we're not going to mark it that way because it would be getting rid of the third of the chord if we were to do so. We then have F, A, F, and C. That's F major. That's a secondary dominant. That's five of five because F major is the dominant of B flat, which is our five. And then we cadence on B flat, B flat, D, F, and B flat. And to me, this sounds like a half cadence, but to you, this might sound like an imperfect authentic cadence. And if that were the case, you could start analyzing in the key of B flat from as early as the beginning of the chorale, I guess, technically, even though it doesn't sound that way. But I'd say realistically, somewhere around the last beat of the third measure of the phrase or uh, this phrase uh, measure right here. So this would be a 4-6 chord, this would be a 2-6-5 chord, uh, this would be 5, and this would be 1. Obviously the analysis looks a lot better in the key of B-flat, which, you know, does make me question my judgment, but it sounds like a half cadence to me. The leading tone, the secondary leading tone that is, gets introduced like right before the cadence. I don't think a modulation has happened, it just doesn't sound like it to me. Uh, however, uh, the next phrase does definitely sound like a modulation has occurred. We get A naturals as early as the measure before, which definitely makes it feel more B flat centric. So immediately after our B flat chord, we get B flat, D, F, and B flat. That's another five chord passing seventh in the bass. And then we get G, E flat, B flat, and E flat, which is our tonic triad in first inversion neighbor tone in the bass, and then we get G, E flat, B flat, and B flat again. No need to reanalyze. Passing tones in the bass and the alto before we get E flat, B flat, G, and E flat. Lots of ones and fives so far. And that would be like taking the triad and putting it in root position. 
seems like we had we had a whole measure of just one but remember it's only two beats and Bach does that quite often where one chord gets uh, harmonized or focalized over two beats so we have a, a couple of passing tones in the upper voices as well uh, that would be like the equivalent of uh, we have F we have a we have E and we have no nah, not really analyzable we have E flat E flat B flat and G, which is like another root position tonic triad, no need to reanalyze. We get D, F, B flat, and F. That's B flat major in first inversion. Passing tone in the bass, we get B flat, F, C, and E. And I think it's somewhere in and around here that we modulate. In fact, I might even make the argument that we modulate right here from B flat, and we'll call this B flat. Uh, over D chord our tonic now rather than our dominant because this A natural happens right here and if we look at this B flat as a non chord tone we have A F C and E flat which would be the equivalent of F7 in first inversion which is 565 five. and that analysis looks concise to me we then have B flat F C and D this C is a 9 8 suspension over the uh, bass Otherwise, it's implying a tonic triad. We have F, F, B flat, and C. There's a 4 3 suspension here that resolves down to A on the next beat. We know a five chords being implied there, F major, and then we cadence on B flat major, which is our tonic triad in root position. Okay, looking ahead, we are moving back to the key of E flat major, even with this D flat here. We'll talk about it when we get to it. I do think this B-flat is also functioning as our dominant because we get E-flat immediately afterwards, E-flat, E-flat, G, and B-flat. We might be tempted to call this one, but with this passing D-flat in the bass, I think our tonic triad's actually functioning as a secondary dominant. E-flat is also the dominant of A-flat. In major keys, you have to add that seventh in order for it to be... Uh, very deliberate otherwise one going to four is just a normal cycle of falling fifths progression with the d flat you're really emphasizing the fact that a flat is going to be coming afterwards by bringing in a chromatic tone and a flat comes afterwards and the main reason why i don't think we've modulated to the key of a flat here even though it is a nearby key is the fact that we have d natural immediately afterwards. Even though another D flat gets introduced at the end of the next measure we're going to look at, the D natural in between the two of them makes this feel like we're just tonicizing A flat for an extended period of time rather than modulating. But here we have C, E flat, A flat, and E flat, which is 4, 6, passing tone in the bass before we get E flat, E flat, G, and B flat, which again is another 5 of 4 chord or a tonic triad, depending on how you look at it. Passing 7th in the tenor before we get A flat, C, E flat, and C, which is our 4 chord in root position, another passing tone in the bass. We then have C, C, E flat, and G, that's C minor, which is our submediate 6. And then we have F, C, E flat, and A flat. Kind of interesting. Uh, we would expect a two chord and first inversion here, but here we have two seven. It's not unprecedented, but uh, still relatively uncommon to see a root position two chord in a cadential context in the chorales. Passing tones in the melody and the tenor, B flat, A, D, and F. That's B flat seven in root position, or five seven. And then our perfect authentic cadence concludes with E flat major, E flat, G, B flat, and E flat which is our tonic triad. And that concludes the A section. Now we're moving into the B section. Now the B section, the first phrase ends in a deceptive cadence in the key of E flat, which is kind of interesting. We have D, B flat, F, and B flat, which is B flat major and first inversion, that's five, six. Then we have E flat, E flat, G, and B flat, which is a tonic triad, passing seventh in the tenor, F, C, G, and B flat. I think this C is an accented non chord tone. This G is an accented non chord tone. And this B flat is an accented non chord tone, if I'm not mistaken. Here we have F, D, F, and A, which would be D, or A flat rather, which would be D diminished in first inversion, 7, 6. And we would expect a tonic triad in first inversion after that, which is what we get G, E flat, B flat, and G. 17616, a very common progression in the chorales, uh, also the 
inverse 1 6 7 6 1 it's a very common progression as well so 1 6 we have some passing tones in the alto and the bass b flat b flat d and f another five chord b flat major here we have a passing seventh and this b flat is also a chord tone so we don't need to mark it and then we cadence not on e flat major but c minor c g c and e flat which is our sixth chord However, our next phrase ends in a perfect authentic cadence. So we have G, B flat, D, and B flat. I do think this sounds like a three chord. It does sound kind of deceptive or transitive, like I have described um, progressions like this in the past. Three typically wants to go to six, but there's no reason why six can't go to three because the same voice leading would move between the notes if they're adjacent to one another in the chord progression, which uh, they're not exactly adjacent because there's a half note here, but if you redacted it, you would see that the same voice leading would get you from one direction to the next. Uh, but I guess you could also analyze this as a 1-6 chord as well if you look at this E-flat as the chord tone, but I don't hear it that way. I hear it as a 3 chord. We then have D, B-flat, F, and B-flat. That is B-flat major over D again, which is 5-6. A couple of passing tones in the lower voices, and then we get B-flat, D, F, and B flat with a passing seventh in the melody. That's like taking the chord and putting it in root position. And then we have another deceptive progression, E flat, B flat, F, and G. I think there's an argument to be made that this is maybe implying a root position uh, tonic triad, but this suspension right here, this 9-8 suspension over the bass, it gets interrupted as the bass skips down to C. Uh, when the resolution happens, leaving us with a C minor triad, C, C, E flat, and G, which is our sixth chord, so another deceptive progression like we saw earlier. We then have A flat, C, E, and E flat, rather, and F, which is F minor 7 over A flat. There's our 2, 6, 5 chord. And then we have a couple of um, not necessarily passing tones, but non chord tones. This D is a non chord tone, this B flat's a non chord tone as well as this B flat. Uh, they all sp uh, together spell B flat major, B flat, B flat, D, and F, which we know very well is our 5. And then we cadence on E flat major, which is our 1, E flat, G, B flat, and E flat. And then we have our first of three short phrases. They're only like four beats long. Uh, we have uh, first, we have an imperfect authentic cadence in the key of E flat major. We have B flat, B flat, D, and F. It's another five chord, B flat major with a passing seventh in the bass. We have G, B flat, E, and G, which is E flat major over G. That's our tonic triad and first inversion. F, C, E flat, and A flat. This is another one of those interesting two chords, but I think actually what's happening here is this C is an accented non-chord tone, and this E flat is actually a 7-6 suspension over the bass, and what we're really looking at is another one of these 1-7-1 one, one progressions. We have F, A flat, D, and A flat, which is 7-6. You could say 2 going to 7-6, but 2 going to 7 is a progression that I have been trying to avoid analyzing in the chorales because the typical context that they're presented is only one voice is moving and um, in this case two voices are moving but um, I'll leave the analysis there if that's something that you want to consider I just feel like two going to seven is not a very uh, strong progression as far as predominant going to dominant is concerned basically every other permutation of predominant like two or four and dominant like five or seven is uh, stronger um, or a much more uh, trajectorial, if that's a word, uh, progression than two going to seven because it's the only permutation where the two chords are a third apart, so they share mostly the same notes. Uh, but in this case, I'm just going to say it's a one six going to seven six going to one E flat B flat E flat and G. That's just the relationship I have with the harmony. If you want to mark it as two going to seven, that's totally fine as well. I think they're both valid analyses. Okay, looking ahead to our second of three short progressions, we have an imperfect authentic cadence at the end of it in the key of C minor. Here we have another E flat major triad, E flat, E flat, G, and B flat. I'm going to mark it because it's a new line, it's just a formatting thing. Typically, if I see the same chord over multiple beats in the 
inversion hasn't changed, there's no reason to analyze it. I won't reanalyze it like I did here, but in the case of a new line, I'll do it because it's uh, just easier to see. Um, it's a new line, so it's a new, new line, new me, right? I think this is also where we modulate to the key of C minor. This E flat chord is now our mediant. We then have A, E flat, G, and C. We could analyze this as, uh, or sorry, yeah, A, E flat, G, and C as A minor 7 flat 5 in root position, which would be harmonization of the melodic minor scale, which both possibilities um, suggest this. So I think 6, 7 with the half diminished symbol is valid, but I think this G is a 7, 6 suspension over the bass. So what this really is is F major or F7 over we have F, we have A, we have E flat, and we have C, which would be F7 in first inversion, which would be 4, 6, 5, before we get to uh, B flat, D, F, and D, which for the same reason as this 6, 7 chord could be analyzed as a 6, 7 chord, we can call it 7, but I think this F is like an inverted suspension. I think there's a word for that. I can't remember it right now. But B flat, D, G, and D would be like a, or sorry, B natural, D, G, and D would be like a 5, 6 chord. And I feel like that's really what's being alluded to here. Either way, I think both analyses or any permutation of the two would be suitable. And then we cadence on C minor, C, C, G, and E flat, which is our tonic triad in root position. Okay, looking ahead, we have another deceptive cadence in the key of E flat major. We start off with a C minor triad, C, E flat, G, and E flat, which I think is our, sorry, not we're not going to B flat, we're going to E flat. It is our submediate now. We have a couple of passing tones as well. It's kind of like a passing two chord, right? Because we have the F, the A flat, the C, and the E flat, and six wants to go to two. But we're going to a one chord anyway, so I don't think two going to one is all that likely. We've seen it sometimes where it's like non-refutable, that's the chord progression, but it's super uncommon, and I don't think it really fits the tonal narrative that has been spelled out by the vast majority of the music that we've looked at, so I tend to avoid analyzing it that way unless there's no real uh, way to refute it. We have G, E flat, B flat, and G, which is our tonic triad, E flat major, and first inversion, passing tone in the bass. We have B flat, D, B flat, and F, which is our five chord, B flat major with the passing seventh in the alto. And then we have C minor again, C, E flat, G, and E flat, akin to the first phrase of the B section. And then our last phrase, longest phrase of the B section is concluded with a perfect authentic cadence in the key of E flat major. Um, we start things off with an E flat major chord, E flat, E flat, G, and B flat, tonic triad, passing tones in the alto and the bass, G, B flat, B flat, and E, that's E flat major in first inversion, so we'll just change the figure bass to reflect that, no need to reiterate the Roman numeral, neighbor tones in the bass and the alto, before we get G, E flat, B flat, and B flat, which is again another first inversion, E flat major triad, and then we get E flat, E flat, G, and B flat. This is like the equivalent of taking the chord and putting it in root position, so we'll just mark it that way. We then have A flat, E flat, A flat, and C. It's A flat major in root position. That is our four chord. Passing tone in the bass. We have C, E flat, E flat, and G. That's C minor, which is a six chord. The C is a chord tone, so we don't need to mark it. We then have F, C, E flat, and A. Another one of these interesting root position F minor 7 chords um, in a cadential context, which is interesting. I think we're just borrowing. It, it's basically the exact same progression from the end of the A section. So it has kind of like a, uh, what is it, a rounded binary form where the A section ends with similar material to the B section. It might be a little bit of a stretch, but the progression is there for the most part. 4 going to 6, going to 2, passing tones in the melody and the tenor. 5, B flat, uh, more specifically 5, 7, B flat, A flat, D, and F, and of course we cadence on 1, E flat, G, B flat, and E flat, which is our tonic triad in position, and that is the chorale. A bit of a marathon of a chorale. There's a lot of real estate, but the content 
isn't as dense so that just it's, a, it's like a sprawl of a corral it just occupies a lot of the page and doesn't help that I crammed everything onto one page apologies if you have to zoom in or pull out your magnifying glass or um, scroll in on the browser in order for you to see the corral clearly but um, like I said I am in the interest of saving paper and I don't like having to flip pages to refer back to previous sections I like everything to be on one page if possible um, one of the downsides of analyzing by hand rather than analyzing on the computer. Uh, but that being said, that's today's analysis. A relatively uh, medium, medium long corral. Um, not super dense, but relatively plain chord progression. Not a lot of uh, twists and turns or deviations from tonics and dominance. I mean, if you look at one and five in this corral, tonic or dominant functioning chords make up, I don't know, more than 75% of this corral, um, maybe even more, yeah, more than 75% of this corral, I would say. So the fact that we don't uh, get a wide variety of chords, I think that's more so a byproduct of corrals that have a wider um, harmonic rhythm. Like when you look at corrals that are in 3-4 time that have a harmonic rhythm of 1 and 3, uh, just like how this corral has a harmonic rhythm of 1 and 3, uh, or one and two, depending on how you're counting the beats, um, you tend to see a lot less harmonic variety as opposed to the corrals that are in common time and you have four beats in the measure where you see Bach go wild. Uh, but that's really all I want to say about this corral. Uh, it's interesting to see another one of these ambiguous half cadence slash imperfect authentic cadences. To me it sounds like a half cadence because of the melody and when the melody, uh, even though the harmony might be forcing a different narrative, I think the melody really makes me feel like we're still in the key of E flat here. So even though we go to B flat immediately afterwards, I'm of the mindedness that we are still in the key of E flat even though the analysis looks better in the key of B flat so I think both analyses are fine they both articulate the same real point uh, just uh, how you differ in terms of how you look at the cadence but if you enjoyed the video if you're interested in following me along on this journey to analyze all of the chorale harmonizations feel free to subscribe to the channel hit the notification icon I upload once a day so you'll be notified when I upload if you want your daily dose of Bach or analysis, uh, this is the place to be, um, at least until I finish analyzing all of the corrals. And we're almost 200 episodes in, which is crazy, uh, but there's more than 400 uh, total corrals that have survived the test of time. So don't worry, I'm not even halfway done yet, which is kind of daunting to think about at this point. But still, we're closing in on the halfway mark. I'm almost at the downhill portion of my, uh, my journey, but still lots of content that I've... Uh, produced. Um, again, thank you so much for watching the video and supporting the channel by doing so. I look forward to tomorrow's analysis, and I hope you take care.